Hello everybody, this is Anne. Today I'm going to show you how to paint the pears like the ones on this jar. To do this, I'll show you how to gray your colors. Gray is one of the most powerful colors you can use. It gives surrounding colors the illusion of a boosted intensity, plus it provides beautiful passageways from one color to another. Today's project is just a taste of how I paint with underglazes. If you're looking to paint more complex subjects and desire more detailed instruction, please check out my video workshop series in the links below. The pears and leaves are a result of planned mixing, layering, and changing the intensity of the various underglazes. I'm going to show you how to do that today. I'm going to draw an outline of a pear and leaves on this tile. Now I freehanded mine, but I have a template of this in the link below if you want to use it. The first thing I did was to paint a gray undertone on the pear. My favorite color to use for this is Amico Velvet Baby Blue. It has a light blue opaque tint that actually reads as a gray, and it dulls down any color that you want to lay over top of it or mix with it. Now note that I didn't cover the entire pair. I painted areas which would be more in the shadows, and I left areas white around the edges where the light would hit it. Now when the blue coat dried, I painted a washy transparent yellow over the entire pair. The blue under the yellow appears gray-green, and the yellow over the white appears very intense. Now let that dry. Next I mixed the baby blue with the yellow on the palette. and I painted this more intense green along the bottom of the pear and at the top to pull it more towards the green side. Notice that I kept the yellow edges pure so that they reflect the light. When the underglaze is dry, they blend out with the other colors and they also become much lighter. Now I want to add darker color to the pear where there would be more shadows. So I mixed a little of the Amico Velvet Electric Blue to the lighter green color that I already made, and I applied that to the bottom edge of the pear. The color appears a lot darker and disconnected. I added a little water to it so that it would thin down the color and mix into the other colors. As the clay is very absorbent, I puddled the water so that it wouldn't absorb so fast, and I let this dry completely. I did the same thing to the top part of the pear. Remember that the underglaze will dry to a much lighter color due to that baby blue underglaze. As pears have a nice red blush to it, I mixed a red with the baby blue and a tiny bit of yellow. I wet the pear with clear water to soften the colors. Then I applied the red to the center of the pear. When the water was puddled, the red color was very light. As the water quickly dried, I continued to add more color. 
The drier the surface, the more condensed the color, and the darker it became. While the pear was drying, I decided to work on the leaves. I first applied the green color that I had already mixed up. I then added a little Amico electric blue to the mix to make it a bit darker, and then I applied that towards the pear stem. I added a little more water so that it would soften and mix with the color underneath. I added a little more yellow while it was wet to even out the colors. Now that the red on the pear is dry, I decided to add a little darker red to the blush area. I mixed in a bit more red to the color I already had, then I applied it lightly to the area. For the even darker areas, I mixed up a little purple using red and the electric blue. I applied that to the very bottom of the pear and under the stem. To finish, I added the blue-green to the stem. I then outlined the whole thing in black. I then use my needle tool to add veins to the leaves. After assessing it, I decided to add just a little more of the darker green to highlight the veins. I also thought there might be a few freckles in the blushed area, so I painted some on. Finally, I used the needle tool to clean up any messy areas. The graying of the colors helps the pairs appear as one connected design around the entire piece. When I was happy with it, I bisque fired it. As you can see, the colors became a bit darker and more vivid. I then glazed it and fired it again to cone 5. Now here's the finished jar. As you can see, the gray undertones really help the yellows and the reds intensify. If you like our video, please like, share, and subscribe.
I'll see you next time in the studio.